Hello, Calculus scholars. Um, today we're going to do uh, skill 27, uh, which basically looks at what does the second derivative mean? Um, and we're going to do this from a graphical perspective. And next class, we'll do it from you know, an algebraic perspective. Um, so just to kind of get started here, um, what we're kind of be looking at here is interpreting um, this terminology of second derivative with this concept that you may have learned in pre-calc called concavity. Um, if you haven't, it's all right. I'm going to kind of show you pictures of what it looks like. Um, so basically, uh, what this looks like in terms of f of x, um, we say that you know f of x is concave up, or f of x is concave down. And what that looks like, if you kind of have like that smiley effect in the graph, and I even like to put a little smiley face to help you remember. So, you know, if it's concave up, think up, think positive, think smiley face. And uh, obviously for concave down, you know, think kind of like a frown face. Um, so this is what, you know, things kind of look like in f of x world. All right, um, now we're going to kind of look at what's happening with our first derivative. So in the concave up world, we can kind of see that we have a very negative slope followed by a little bit less negative slope, followed by a zero instantaneous slope and then going to a positive slope. So in the first derivative world, f prime of x is increasing. And likewise, in the concave down type of situation, uh, we may want to think about what is the trend? How is the rate of change of rate of change increasing or decreasing? Uh, but what we see here is that we have a positive slope, then a little bit less of a positive slope, followed by a zero slope, slightly negative, and then a steep negative slope. So f prime of x is decreasing. Now where we're going to really get into play here and why this is called second derivative analysis is thinking about f double prime of x. So if we have a concave up type of situation, this means that f double prime of x is greater than zero or in other words, f prime of x is positive. And likewise in concave down, well, you know, down, you know, kind of sounds like small or, or less than, uh, f double prime of x would be below zero or f prime double prime of x is negative. Um, now, let's think about what happens, though. You may be wondering what happens if f double prime of x is zero. And this is where this next vocab word is going to come in. Um, so this is what we call the inflection point uh, when this occurs. And where you're going to kind of see this, um, if you imagine like a roller coaster, right about the point of where things start to kind of shift and their trend of steepness is the inflection point. So what we can kind of see here is that we have an inflection point. Um, and I'm just going to kind of use a little different color here and highlighter to kind of show. So like here in this green part, um, we're very, you know, concave down. And then uh, we kind of have a transition to concave up at the inflection point, actually. So, 
So uh, the inflection point is where the concavity changes. So it occurs when f prime of x has a max or a min and um, when f double prime of x is equal to zero. So now let's actually take a look at some delta math exercises, shall we? All right, the uh, first delta math exercise, and um, I like you to kind of get in the habit like last time, last few times, getting at least a summary of what is going on in these delta math exercises with nice tips. Um, but what I like you to kind of be uh, thinking about first First type of exercise is called determining concavity visually um, with a guide. And what's really neat is you can actually see what's happening with your slope. And it's asking us for where it is concave down. Um, so what we're looking for, if we kind of look at the slope number, so pay attention to the slope number, like f prime of negative eight, and like what the slope number is doing. Um, so we're at negative two, and it's actually graphs f prime of x for you. Um, it's really cool, actually. So let's see, now we're, you know, two and increasing, three, almost three and increasing. So if we notice right about there, we hit a slope of three. And let's see what happens when we go a little bit beyond. Now we're back down to 2.98. So this is actually right about where the inflection point is. And now we can actually see what's going on with the slope. It's actually graphing the slope for you. It's really cool. So if we kind of, and, and we can kind of retroactively Look at our graph here, but right here is where, so when we have f prime of negative one, right at negative one is where that instantaneous slope is starting to decrease. And if you're reading um, the directions of the question actually, if you see the language concave down, what this is telling us is that f double prime is less than zero or f prime of x is decreasing. And it's a little bit harder to see, you know, f double prime, but we can see what f prime is. And right about from here, onward so between nine and negative one is where we're seen in that interval where we have that concave down type of situation because the derivative has you know it kind of starts you know at a steeper positive less steep positive, zero slope, and then eventually gets steeper and steeper in the negative direction, you know, when we're kind of looking at the slope trends. So I'm just gonna put the interval notation here. Um, so negative one is our first X value. Make sure when you're doing these, um, you're kind of going low number to high number. Um, and that you're paying attention to uh, the brackets as well. Obviously, since we're ending with an open circle. So I got negative one comma nine. 
and let's see how this answer works. And it works beautifully. And you can also see in the solution that it does tell you that it's concave down. Um, the next type of exercise that I'm gonna show you is like this, uh, but without the guided component. Uh, so I'll be showing you how that works. Okay, um, because we have second um, derivatives now, uh, the level two is without the visual intervention of seeing the first derivative. So what it's asking here is it's saying uh, that it is concave up. Um, so it says that f of x is concave up. So what that means is that f prime of x is, so we're looking at the intervals for where f prime of x is increasing. Now, you may be able to kind of see, you know, what parts of a graph look like they make up smiley faces and what parts don't. And, um, you know, that's, that's all good and all, but I think you should really be, you know, kind of looking at the general trends um, with the slope thing that they do have you have here. So if we actually look at the general trends, I have a negative four and it's increasing. So we're increasing constantly. So right there, we're actually going to zero. So right about there, we increased to zero. But then it goes to negative slope again. So right where it stops increasing. So we're looking for increasing first derivatives. So that first derivative number is increasing from negative nine all the way to negative five. So that's our first interval. All right, um, I do think we are gonna have another interval of concave up. So let's actually see what happens. Now here, I'm going back to negative slopes and I'm getting steeper and steeper in the negative. So it's concave down at this point. And we're settling right about negative six at the very steepest negative slope. But right about there at the negative three, we start getting back into the smiley face mode again. So right at negative three, we're at negative six, but then we're getting less steep in the negative. So we're back to negative five point, negative four point, getting closer to negative three, negative one, zero and then eventually going into positive slopes. And right about there at four is where we have our steepest positive slope. And I even like to maybe trace my concavity as well so I can kind of see where the concave up is. So uh, we end right about there. And then we um, got to negative six. Not a bad idea to, you know, kind of trace your graph to kind of help you visualize. Now here we're getting steeper negative and right there at six is where we kind of max out with the negative slope. We're at negative two and then we're getting back to less negative and then into positive slopes. So right at negative two, so that, ne that six in X value.
is an inflection point. So that part to the right of six is concave up. So we can kind of see the regions for which we have concave up. Um, it's a little harder to visually identify. So I, I really do like looking at that first derivative and making sure you know, we are good with that. I'll just take this to a test drive just to make sure we have it all concave up. Put the intervals in. We increase to uh, zero, negative five. And then we kind of bottom out at a negative six slope at the negative three. And kind of top out at positive six at four. So our second interval is negative three to four. And then our third interval is gonna be six to nine. And that should be all three. And we are good. And you can actually see kind of a concave up region. And they do even in the solutions um, graph that f prime of x for you as well. Um, but we're kind of easing you into interpreting um, that second derivative um, and concavity. Another type of question that I'm gonna give you, uh, we've actually seen this with the first derivative um, analysis, is uh, determining the signs of f, f prime, and f double prime. Of course, you know, we have something continuous in the negative nine to nine, this kind of seems pretty standard. Um, it also does give you the inflection points. So uh, keep that in mind. And it's asking you to determine what could be said about the values of f of two, f prime of two, and f double prime of two. And you are given the graph of f. So right there is two. So I'm gonna kind of make some observations. At two, f of two equals to zero. So you should be able to do that with your pre-calculus knowledge. Um, the derivative, uh, one thing we notice is that the function is increasing. So therefore, f prime of two is greater than zero. So that's positive. And then it's asking us about the um, concavity as well. Um, so f double prime of two. So what we can kind of see here, we're kind of into the frowny part of the graph. So function is concave down at that point. So f double prime of two is less than zero, that's negative. So if we were to order, our lowest would be f double prime of two, then we have f of two, because that's zero, and then our biggest quantity would be f prime of two, which is positive. So, and this is y. And then I'm gonna choose the answer choice um, that is the most appropriate. So I'm going to go to the multiple choice, look at the one that starts with F double prime of two being the least. And this is the one that is going to match. And we are good.